Kalibi, she had this commercial production capacity to take care of every member of the community with surplus, you know. I'm talking about my days when I was growing up in the 70s, late 70s and 80s. Banana was booming. Why isn't banana something now? Yes, we may have suffered some issues in terms of the market, but banana is still banana. And people in the Caribbean and around the world still eat bananas galore. Banana is one of the major foods consumed in the world. Why isn't their major banana cultivation still in Calibishi producing the kind of bananas we produced in the 80s? If we produce the bananas, we can sell them, you know. So Calibishi was a major hub for that in my time. I never know Calibishi people depending on anybody for anything. We always took care for ourselves and our people. No one in Calibishi went hungry. If there was a neighbor who didn't have the other people in the community feed that neighbor. We had the production capacity, as I said, to produce well, all the juices. Plantain juice or real, just name them. We used to make coconut oil, castor oil, even bay oil. I was reminded and I remember well. Yayam and his brother, they used to, they had, there, was, there was a bay oil of manufacturing um, um, pr processing plant in Calibishi. So we had the, the, the ability to do the stuff that, we, that, that were necessary to take care of the people. And we also fed other communities as well. And the, the village, the community was always vibrant in that light. But there was a time when I wasn't around as yet, but my grandmother told me, Ava Kalibishi Kalibishi, people had to travel to Portsmouth to sell their produce. But it would be a long walk. So you would have to walk overnight. Because back then didn't have roads. It was tracks at bush. So maybe some people made a little track every now and then. But predominantly it was major bush. And the rivers were taller, bigger, stronger, wider. And there were no bridges. You had to find a way to walk across the river. By some tree, some farmer fell to, to walk across the river. And then you had to go have your balance with your stuff carrying to put stuff on your head. Serious stories, my grandmother told me. So they had to walk overnight, like on Friday, to get there for Sunday morning, sorry, Saturday morning, do market in Portsmouth, sell their stuff, leave the market at about Saturday early enough, like 2, 3 o'clock, so they could get to back to Calibishi on a Sunday. Early morning, prepare their stuff, go to church, and then prepare for school. So the children would be left to, in the care of the neighbors, while the people who were strong enough or who had the means walked to Portsmouth and back over the weekend to sell their produce. My grandmother was one of those stronger people. My grandmother was very strong. She was like a lioness. I, I miss Mamo so much. I have never met somebody as strong as my, as my grandmother. Well, maybe my great-grandmother, but my, mom, my, my grandmother was absolutely strong. My mother, too, is very strong, my sister. I, I became from a family of very strong women. So the story, or one of the stories, many, 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 many stories my grandmother told me, was that on one particular night, morning, they were going to Portsmouth, and they stopped to rest, put down their food, and everybody rested. And when they woke up, they, they were surrounded by some tall men, Jifle Wan. They called them back then. They were like devils. People felt it was like people doing lugau. But apparently, in hindsight, my grandmother told me it wasn't pias lugau. It's, and she called the names of the people who were doing that. Wicked people who understood the art of stilt walking, which came from Africa, where you can go on this boabwano. They would call them boabwai in these days. So these men in the early days got this technique and they used to dress up in this boabwa, lugau, gifle one. And they would come and find out where the people would pass with their produce, scare them away while they were sleeping or resting. So they ran and left the food because they saw a shifle and the, the men would pick up the stuff and take it for their, as their property to Portsmouth and sell. And my grandmother and they would come back empty handed because they were scared away from their produce. Um, and they would come back home with nothing. But after a while, they realized that this was a trick, and they stood up. And there were some fellas among them who 
were masters at dispelling D. Lawrence tricky because D. Lawrence was a big topic back then. The ability to do fancy things. It was like trickery. But it, it looked so real that people believed in D. Lawrence and there were D. Lawrence books. I remember reading some D. Lawrence books, you know. I was told not to, but I was always inquisitive, so I read. But there's nothing in it, it's just tricks. Like we see now on, on TV. They call it magic. So that was the order of the day. But the people who, were, who had been exposed to this started, you know, wising up to the idea and say, look, that thing, we're not going to run and leave our food again. So they started holding their grounds. And I will tell you how that story ends, but it's going to have to be in the next episode here of Calibishi Chronicle.